Every beer has a story to tell. Tell it, brother. And the tale behind our 21st Amendment team homebrew competition is stepped in the passion of our crew to create unique and interesting beers. Our Tales from the Kettle series brings the story to life with our team's launcha to the queen is this year's winner as they tell their tale through a one-of-a-kind expectational Scottish-style ale brewed with black tea they call Not Your Cup of Tea. Take in, in the inspiration and enjoy the taste of a good tale. Welcome to the Tapping Out Show. My name is Jeremy, this is Matt, and we're going to do 21st Amendment's Tales from the Kettle. <laughs> Tales from the Kettle. This is actually a Scotch Ale, which is another beer that I think Matt and I actually do really agree on because it's kind of the best of both worlds. We're looking forward to this. I mean, this is something that Matt picked up and kind of was like, I kind of have to do this. Yeah. And I agree. Well, normally I just usually try to, I try, I try not to only pick IPAs because that's what I like. You can see the redness when you're pouring it. Yeah. Um, actually we liked a, a chai tea IPA. Um, and that, that was a big winner for us. So when I saw this tea and a scotch ale, which is something that, that we both like, I figured it's definitely something we should at least try out. Uh, 21, 21st Amendment Brewery's good. We've had a few of their beers already. We like them. So um, One of my favorite know, Bay, Bay Area breweries. So I figured it could be uh, you know, a good chance of us liking it. It definitely. Uh, it's darker than it's most. It's definitely scotches. red. I'm looking at the light, light through it. I saw the redness when you poured it. it looked like blood almost. I mean, it's it's. Well, I mean, it's red beer. You, you can't tell me that's not darker than most Scotch ales that we've had. I mean, by. I wouldn't say a lot, but I mean it's definitely dark, dark. It's funny because I can smell that caramel. You can smell the caramel on it for sure. You can smell the malt. Just that caramel flavor to it, almost kind of roasty. There's a pretty good, decent amount of carbonation to this, especially with the side pour that I had, and it still has a decent head on it. Uh, I mean, let's face it, I, I'm almost gonna say the black tea is what gives it the color, which is funny, because I don't smell the black tea. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I, I was just gonna say, you can't really smell tea um, too much anyway, and when you're gonna have all this malt and everything in there. I'm expecting the tea to be more like like the the tea IPA that we had. A cut. It just kind of blends it out in the end. It yeah. kind of fades it. Especially, I, I I my theory on why they they add the tea in it because they bump the alcohol up, and they wanted to kind of like fade it out with the tea because you know it's strong for a red. So my theory on this and we is actually had a red today that <laughs> was super strong, and um, uh, not as strong as it. I mean. A lot stronger than this one, but uh, I think this one might be the reason why they added it. Same reason the IPA is just where it kind of just mellows it out in the end. I think that the black tea is cut in because of the sweetness of a Scotch ale. It could be though too. Yeah. Are you following me on that one? Because most Scotch ales have that malty caramel sweetness to it, which is funny because most malts are not really sweet. But you know what I'm talking about. Where most Scotch ales have like a really like sweet finish to it. And I think the black tea is going to give you that. You can smell the sweetness on this, too. Yeah. I think the black tea is going to give that little kick. That little sweet, not sweet. You know what I mean? That, that little offset, the yin-yang to most of those kind of beers that throw a lot of the tea flavors into it. So that's yeah. my theory. Well, to that this makes thing. sense, too, because you add sweetness to tea. Only one way so, to find out. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Exactly what I thought. That's actually really, that's a cool, cool idea. I, I you first, because apparently <laughs> I was one over with one sip. I'm still tasting it, but I, I like it so far. I would, I would say that um, it really, uh, 
it doesn't cut out as much in the tea. Like it just kind of goes right into the black tea, like you said, yes. more of a a flavor, and it does have a more of a tea flavor to it versus that it sweet, up. sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah, so it's almost yeah. like tea and malt, and uh, it's pretty good. The more you drink it, you kind of it kind of blends more to it. So kind of what my theory was, it starts out really malty, sweet, like every Scotch ale you've ever had, and the tea just at the end kind of like tart, heavy. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, plus it's nine percent too, so it's uh, which is funny because it that I would say that whoop. makes it not as much like every as much like every Scotch ale you ever had because of that alcohol, and I think that's why the tea. Helps a lot. Helps a lot. Yeah. Well, that's what I was about to say is because of the tea taste at the end with the sweetness, I don't get a lot of the heavy booze that you would get from something that's over 7%. Yeah. So, and, and I'm not saying that that's the tea kicking in to do it, but it definitely helps out a lot with hiding that factor that this is something that's a very high alcohol content beer for most yeah. people. I mean, me and you drink 17% Imperial Stouts, so that's not really a, yeah. a great aspect of it what i mean is is that yeah, the tea 12 something red today <laughs> yeah and a 12 you know 12 percent yeah. imperial reds my whole point to that is my theory at least in the taste profile is exactly what i thought where you get the malt you get the sweet and right when the sweet starts to kind of kick in where it gets a little too sweet like most scotch ales where you kind of go like oh that caramel head yeah. it, it cuts into that black tea which i kind of think is funny because most beers in this kind of alcohol set the end is where you pick up the booze aspect of the alcohol and this really hides that so well and it's kind of funny because I wanted this to be good and I'm kind of almost a little too pleased with it that I'm wondering if I drank a few of these I would have a different opinion are you are you following me on that like yeah you don't know until you try of right course, but I, I I like it I mean for a scotch ale is it my favorite no is it something that I would recommend to somebody else? Yeah, for it's sure. Scotch ale with black tea, though, so it's kind of hard to. A lot of these ones like this, I try not to um, compare it to a traditional Scotch ale. It's, yeah, it's not apples to apples by any means. I would say it's good, good red, um, strong alcohol, easy to drink, good idea with the black tea. I'm glad we tried it. What are you thinking about on rating? So for a Scotch ale that is blend with a tea and this alcohol content between one out of five, I'm probably going four, solid four out of five. I was thinking four and a quarter out of five. I can bump up to four and a quarter to for the for the show total. Yeah, four and a quarter out of five for tapping out show. I think that's a, that that's. I almost think that's a little less than what I was expecting. I thought you were going to go a little higher. We're going to meet in the middle. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I was honestly thinking uh, four and a f four and a five in the beginning, but I figured four and a quarter ish. It's kind of a good way to meet. Uh, it's a great beer. Uh, we like reds. We like strong reds. We, we like, like strong, strong reds that are easy to drink. We like we like Scotch ales. We like heavy you know, Scotch ales. Yeah, we love. So, I mean, so I think this is uh, this makes sense. Uh, anyways, hit us up. Email is info at tappingoutshow.com, and our social media is all one word. It's Tapping Out Show. Uh, besides that, we're going to finish these out. Cheers. <laughs>